Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah ma ba'ad. A lot of people have benefited from the water of Zamzam. Millions if not billions. People continue to do so until today as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. But now it's readily available, freely available everywhere really, Zamzam water. In our own cities, people are travelling a great deal to go for Umrah and Hajj. So in this clip I uh, decided to <coughs> excuse me, record a few masail and a number of benefits connected to Zamzam water. But the question is particularly asking about du'a. He has heard that a person should make du'a whilst drinking zamzam, after drinking zamzam. Is this authentic? And if it is authentic, how should he do so? Is there a particular way of doing it? The Messenger of Allah Wasallam. this is in Sahih Muslim, he says, إِنَّهَا mubaraka," Meaning the water of zamzam, the well of zamzam particularly, and its water is blessed. From this, the ulama have said that it is blessed, it carries blessings with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all water is blessed, but this has a particular sense of blessing. And he explains to us, It is actual food which nourishes a person, and it's been narrated in the seerah that some people, when they were being boycotted, they just survived of Zamzam and they were perfectly fine and well. So he is saying here, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَهِيَ الطَعَامُ طُعْمُ it carries nutrition and it is um, uh, beneficial and wholesome for the body. وَالشِّفَاءَ suqum And it is a cure for diseases. So from this we learn that this water is something which has been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another hadith, and this is in Ibn Majah, and it's been made sahih by more than one of the ulama uh, from the time of the salaf, as Shaykh al-Albani says, and then he classed it as sahih himself. But the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, ما أزمزم لما شورب له. The water of Zamzam is for whatever you drink it for. Imam al Nawi, in his explanation, he says that whatever haja, whatever need you have for Zamzam, whatever need you have, Zamzam is drunk for that need, benefiting yourself in the dunya and the akhirah. This is due to the generality of the statement of the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have another hadith. Where Abdullah ibn Abbas عنهما, He said I bought some Zamzam for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Was sitting And then he stood up And he started drinking And whilst he was drinking The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Was facing the Qibla He mentioned the name of Allah He had three sips And then he praised Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Where it says in the Hadith Azza wa Jal When he had finished then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in ayat ma baynana wa bayn al-munafiqeen, surely an example or a sign or a, or, or a signal between us and the people of nifaq, meaning a differentiation between the people of iman and the people of nifaq, annahum la yitadalla'oon min zamzam, they do not benefit from zamzam water. So these hadith have been used by the ulama to talk about some of the etiquettes of Zamzam water. This last hadith, some of the ulama have said that is Daif, whereas Shaykh al Bani has said that is Hassan ibn Ghayrih, and others from the ulama also. From this now, we learn, just like you would normally do when it comes to eating and drinking, you start with Bismillah, you eat with your right, you would take a minimum of three breaths, you wouldn't gulp it down in one go, and when you're finished, you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, Zamzam is a little bit different. Because of what we have seen from these narrations. From this, some of the fuqaha have said that it is actually recommended for a person to drink to their fill as much as they are able. Meaning benefit from this this water. So some of them have said that the one third rule does not apply when it comes to zamzam. It is recommended for the person to drink as much as they can. Another issue that we learn, and this is in Sahih Bukhari also, as we have seen from the previous narration, Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, This is Sahih Bukhari. I bought some zamzam water for the Messenger of Allah and he drunk it whilst he was standing. So some of the ulama have said that the person should face the qibla, the person should stand, and this is recommended. Others have said, no, it's not recommended. It is something done by the Messenger of Allah to show us that it is permissible for us to do so. And here, there's an issue of flexibility in an area where there is leeway. Ibn Uthameen, rahimahullah, said that there is no dalil in this from the practice of the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, because sometimes they did it, sometimes they didn't do it. And it's not been narrated that some of the salaf, or, you know, that is continued as a practice 
from the time of the Salaf that they used to stand up and drink and face the Qibla, etc. So even if the Amin is of the view that it is, it isn't Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah did it to show that it's permissible. Others have said, no, this is the practice of the Messenger of Allah so a person should do so. For me, I think the view of the Amin is stronger. However, if a person was to do it, I mean, there's no harm in it, like I said, it's the issue where there is legitimate difference of opinion. So these are from the etiquettes. They start with Bismillah, they uh, take three sips, they finish with Alhamdulillah. But those things which are particular to Ma'at of Zamzam, three things. Number one, they should drink to their fill. Number two, they should face the Qibla. Number three, they should stand. And the fourth thing, excuse me, the fourth thing is that the person should increase in dua. What is the delil for this? Ma'at of Zamzam, Lima Shurib Allah. Due to the generality of the statement of the Prophet where he is saying, the Zamzam water is whatever you drink for it. As in, whatever you want to use it for, that's what you use it for. From this we also learn the Messenger of Allah used to use it. Now this is connected to du'a, this is connected to barakah, this is connected for us seeking its benefits. To help those people who are afflicted with some kind of sickness, the Messenger of Allah used to use it for medicinal purposes. This is in the Tirmidhi. There was a person, he wasn't feeling so well, so the Messenger of Allah asked for that water to be brought and then he poured that water over the person who wasn't feeling well. In another hadith, this is in Bayhaqi and it's been made Sahih by Shaykh Khuzbani, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, used to ask for water of uh, Zamzam to be brought so that he could benefit from it and that it could also be used for medicinal purposes. From this, we then learn also that the water of Zamzam is blessed and can be benefited from wherever a person is. Some of the ulama has said, no, it's only blessed and, and beneficial if a person is in Makkah. Whereas Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, said, from these narrations we learn, the fact that Suhail ibn Amr used to bring water from Makkah to Medina, so that the Messenger of Allah some can drink and benefit, and they can use it for those people who are not feeling so well, uh, and they can use it for Ruqya as well, etc. This shows us, Ibn Taymiyyah says, rahimahullah, that the water of Zamzam is blessed wherever it may be. The water itself carries that blessing. With the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for dua, then the person makes dua in any way that he wants. And there are plenty of examples from the time of the Salaf that they used to make dua. So it's been narrated that uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas used to drink the water of Zamzam and then he used to make this supplication on a regular basis. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'a wa rizqan wasi'a wa shifa min kulli da. Oh Allah, I ask you for beneficial knowledge. Um, for rizq, which is vast, and a cure from all diseases. If a person looks at this hadith, you can see that the, 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 or this narration, should I say, that the dua of Abdullah bin Abbas is comprehensive. It consists of goodness in the dunya and in the akhirah. There's another incident that took place at the time of the Salaf. I mean, there are plenty of examples, but I'll just mention this as well. Sufyan ibn Uyayna mentioned this hadith, Ma'u Zamzam, Lima Shuribalah, the water of Zamzam, is whatever he's drunk for, in one of his durus. So there was a young man that was sitting there, he went away and drank Zamzam and then he came back. After he had drank the Zamzam, he benefited from more than 100 a hadith. This is based on the understanding of the Salaf, which is Ma'u Zamzam, Lima Shuri Bala. Zamzam water is whatever you drink it for. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, he used to say after drinking water, Oh Allah, um, spare me from thirst on the day of judgment Oh Allah, spare me from thirst on the day of judgment And then he used to quote this hadith The water of Zamzam is whatever you drink it for Therefore, these are some of the etiquettes and the akhlaq uh, Connected to the water of Zamzam There is one last question I think we'll just mention it I was going to put it separately The question is asking Okay, say you've got some Zamzam water if you were to mix it with normal water, does that now all become blessed? Does that now all become zamzam or not? Now, the ulama have actually talked about this in the, their books of fiqh when it comes to the water itself. This water, which is now zamzam, say you've got a litre of zamzam water. They've looked at the virtues, we've just done that. This is another discussion. They're saying, okay, now we've got this blessed water in front of us. What do we do with it? What can we do it with it? What can't we do with it? So they have said 
and there is, like I said, this is overwhelming majority because the Messenger of Allah said, "Innaha mubaraka." This is something which is blessed. They have come to the conclusion from these ahadith and those that are like it that the water of Zamzam cannot be used for things which involved uh, purification and najasa and anything which has dirt connected to it. So, I mean, say you've got some something dirty and you just use Zamzam water for it. Can you do that? The answer is no. Uh, can you use it for istinja? The answer is no. Can you use it for ghusl? The answer is no. So now we've looked at the virtue side of it, but now we're looking at the actual, the, the volume and the quantity of the water itself. Can you do wudu with it? Yes, because this is an act of worship. There is no harm in that. So this is what they have said when it comes to the zamzam water. Connected to that then, they have said that if you mix the zamzam water with normal water, the person shouldn't do that. The person shouldn't do that. And the reason why they shouldn't do that is this, this is something which is, uh, you know, uh, specific. The zamzam water should be left by itself. But if a person was to do that, then the ulama have basically said that, that zamzam water then becomes, um, I was going to say contaminated, but mixed with normal water. And then that ordinary water doesn't, Turn into Zamzam. The virtues of that water now in the new volume of water that you've got is um, diluted with the Zamzam, or should we say the other way around? So now this new volume of water has now detracted from the blessings of the Zamzam because the person has mixed it. So this is what we were saying before. We've got the virtues. So we've talked about how a person should make da and how it should stand and etc. But then they've looked at the practicality of it as well where they have said, no, this sums and water should be left by itself. This sums and water should be respected. This sums and water shouldn't be used for things which are, you know, don't befit the sums and water because the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, in the Mubarak. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the ayah, ma baynana wa baynana munafiqin hu laayta dalla'un min zamzam. They don't care about the zamzam. They don't give no attention to it. So these are from the ahkam when it comes to the water. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us of those who benefit from this water. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us of those who visit his house on a regular basis in a manner that he is pleased with us with. Allahu a'lam wa sallallahu alayhi wa